it's very possible for Toxic to run out of steam later in the bracket. And I'm curious to see whether this kind of change of a stage three setting being mostly online, whether that's going to have much of a factor here. Like, is is Tox going to keep this crazy clutch factor all the way through? Or is this where that kind of train of momentum just hits its final stop? Well, let's look at this for a bit of info as well. In the picks and bands, we have Slash being bound out by Tox. He's then able to actually achieve an anarchy pick. Nick's coming back through from Vanguard. This is interesting. There's a lot of movement champions that have been just completely eliminated from the pool, but two of them were banned out by Tox. Yeah, I'm not sure why Tox would ban Slash when I haven't really even seen Venga play Slash. So yeah. that does seem a little bit unusual. Anyway, we have to go off what we're given. He still gets the Anarchy, which is good. Um, and overall, Without the slash, it's, he, he, I think I feel he's a substantially weaker as a player, as as we've discussed in the past. That kind of champion brings him to life. So not having that definitely favors Vengro. I feel. I'm and curious I, to see if maybe that is flipped. I don't think so. I think it is indeed Vengro is going to start off on the stroke. My guess is is that Tox realized he couldn't pick slash himself on his first pick, so he decided to just go ahead and ban it to make sure that Vengro couldn't play it instead and deny the champion on him on the second map around. Because Vengro is playing stroke, which clearly shows that he at least has some familiarity with the crouch lighting. And who knows, maybe Tox knows something that we don't. Well, you never know. We are going to find out, though, as it seems like we are ready for Corrupted Keep. We're getting into this game. Dan, another best of three series this time back in Europe. Let's see if Tox can keep on Keep it on. He's been doing so much damage throughout the course of the tournament. Can he claim another victory? Yeah, my my uh, my gut is saying Wenger, but I, I definitely think it will still be very, very close. I would have to agree with you. I do feel like Wenger probably takes this one, but it could be a lengthy series. Just a shame we're on the best of three instead of a best of five, but let's just uh, see what they pull out. As we do have Tox on the cleaner, and we say that Wenger is up on the strong. So a spam of bullets coming out early on from Tox on the Galena. Wenger doing his best Tox impression on the Strog and Pico as he uses his speed to move his way around the map, navigate and collect all of the items he wants. Right now getting the heavy, but it's instantly wow. been shattered by Tox. Look at the amount of damage he's done. Yeah, Tox is managing this mid ground particularly well at the moment. That rocket was exceptionally close to booping Wenger, potentially off the map. As <laughs> he's being chased down by a cheeky beaker. And he feels confident enough to try and contest. He's going to be a little bit late and does hear that, so needs to retreat. And also get some, a little bit more ammo. Good use of the heavy machine gun as well from Tox so far. He shreds the entire stack of Venga. He's just so precise with it. He's not missing a beat right now as he's spitting straight fire from this HMG. Gets the Mega as well and then races his way back over. Even though he's not on the Slash, he's still moving fast and he's certainly creating some huge holes into the game. Venga's defense crumbling to pieces here. He has to fight his way through a Pika, drops the totem to give himself a little bit more sustenance. The rocket hits directly and that is good night for Venga. Good night indeed. As Tox has the um, an amazing opening so far, he's really capitalizing and taking advantage of these long range fights. He's always opening and initiating much earlier than Venger is reacting to him. So Venger needs to have a, an assessment on how to counter that so far. Well, it's coming back through. Woo. Very precise so far of LG, but it's not going to matter as Wenger one-ups him. Also gets this frag at absolutely perfect timing. It's pure. Another pickup of the Mega.
plenty of time between major items, but obviously Toxic did away the heavy. So Venga not going to be too aggressive so far, but can control the lightning gun, which is definitely a good strategy against Toxic, who is so powerful with his hit scan. He's relatively trapped over here, so Venga is going to sit around and try and at least manage that exit, which he does particularly well, but eating a little bit of damage himself plays a safe option. God's whizzing straight by, Venga as he turns the corner, takes a heavy hit, has to grind to a halt as he brings the handbrake on, gets the turn off and does get away, but he's taken a lot of damage. He's having to find whatever he can to at least give him some kind of stack back in his favour, but it's not looking good. He is low on HP. That tripod could have killed him right then and there if he would have been a little bit further out. Picks up a heavy. There's really much more he can do from this position. Tox is starting to bully him. Yeah, Tox really is, but it's Venga's speciality, as we all know, is playing the keep away game, or consistently dealing enough damage to keep his enemy at bay while staying alive. And with the speed advantage of the stroke, he's going to be exceptionally hard to track down and pin down from Tox. Oh, how does he do it every single time? He always seems to hit the perfect rocket, so even though he should have died, he also gets the trade. He's just so effective at the trade game. It always works for some reason. It's just madness. And once again, he's proving that. Big rocket frag to find. Keeps the game close. Back on Tox's POV for now though. And his pop will provide us with some information as he obliterates the Pika flying straight towards him. Doesn't want that one smashing into his noggin. Nearly five minutes through on this opening map now. And a lot of turmoil between the both of them. Trade game being the real point. Yeah, but it's good to see how stable Tox is being, not over committing, even though he is in advantage quite a lot of the time. He's favoring playing this range game. He's winning on these HMG battles. So, following a similar path that he took against Kula, creating opportunities he can be confident in. Getting the spam shots off. Docks. Heavy hits doing an awful lot of damage. Pika coming back into the forefront as well. Venga! He got the Mega, but he was nearly slain then and there, right where he stood. As Pox is doing so much damage with his HMG, it has been his biggest boon throughout the game. Absolutely. He's still keeping the scoreline to 2-2, so job well done thus far. Four minutes to go. I'm just baffled at how he's being so effective with the HMG right now. He's just shredding Venga. And again, it's his intro weapon. He tries to slaughter him with it. Switches out to the LG. Venga's low. Has the high tail out of there. He cannot afford to stand around for any longer. This also opens up an avenue for Tox to replenish his HMG rounds and get a light to add to his total stack. Huge spot to be in. LG tickle as he drives by. They both race towards the heavy. Oh. Takes far too much damage. Nearly went straight out the map. Drops the totems and that will be his saving grace. It is those Benga copyrighted rockets at the moment that have been his saving graces. He's found Tox in the corner. Can he finish him off? He's very wary. That rocket's done a lot of damage. Venga needs to retreat. There's plenty of time before the Mega. And Venga makes the wrong decision to jump down as it's Tox's defensive rockets that shine through in this engagement. And again, though, it was like a couple of inches difference and it would have been another trade frag. Venga's rocket was so close to impacting onto Tox as he fully committed to that fight, needed to take him down with the HMD. Yeah, and you, to your point, I'm, I'm going to be so interested to see at the end of this game what the, ouch, the HMD stats actually show because he has been so incredibly effective at not only obviously his aim, but the manner by which he's always and consistently got that weapon ready early. You can see all the time his weapon switches are on point and that is winning in the game at the moment. Yeah, it's, it's literally been like his way to introduce himself into fights and how he's closing out frags. It's all been about that HMG. The machine gun has been everything to him. It's his biggest tool in his arsenal. And again, 
Lovely damage done. This time switching up a little bit with his weapon prioritization. Beautiful rocket through the sidelines. And a smart read. Doesn't overextend. Doesn't push in too early. Waits for the opportune moment to try and slide his way back through. Totem Heal comes in clutch. And the LG could very well finish Vanga here. But it's his rocket. Rockets again, yeah. so strong. And this is the one thing that was the first mistake of the game, really, from Tox. A slight over extension through to the light armor area. Venga made him pay and then pushing in ever so slightly too far on the heavy. And once again, Venga made him pay. So we're already back to 4 4. Wait, this could be 5 4. And it is! Not the way I thought it was going to go. Venga! It gets that kill with the rocket. This is a huge comeback, and already now this game is close! Oh! He takes the fight, he goes straight through the portal, Tox is there, it's a point-blank rocket to blow him completely open, Tox is just chasing as well. Dan, I want to get off this wild ride. I mean, I don't know what's going on anymore, Tox is now stuck and, and low, and Venga's got the advantage as Tox rushes in for the spawn frag and doesn't convert. He's most certainly going to go down now, it is just a matter of time as he hits a full rocket. How has he hit that full rocket from half range? Venga knows how low he is, so he's just going to wait. There's nothing he can do. He can clean up. He can drop the totem. Totem's back up. He well, that's, tr that's true. Venga allowed... <laughs> spent so much time waiting around. He allowed Tox to get that back. He was there for a good 20 seconds, Jack. He just camped down. He had the marshmallow and spores out. Eating that marshmallow, it's giving him some health back and he's replenished. This is the final 30 seconds of the fight. It's going to be all out aggression. Let's see who is better, who's going to be more of a brawl star in this one. The connection with the rocket at least forces him back and buys a bit more time for Venga. Major items are up. Seems like the split will be Tox taking heavy, Venga going for Mega. Sudden death is on the cards unless one of them executes a kill in this last 10 seconds. And Tox really got a big let off there as Venga should have finished him off. But as we've kind of referred to quite a lot today, Venga is relatively risk averse in his play. Hopefully it doesn't come back to bite him in the bottom. Note him down. That's one out of three. So overstack isn't really viable anytime soon here unless this is going to be quite a long overtime. Venga sees the totem and will be doing some totem removal. Oh, the Pika movements. It looks like he's doing some drone racing in his downtime alongside his practice, Dan. Does indeed. Going through those checkpoints in record time, but not connecting with his final objective, which is Tox. Still all about this HMG. Barely replenishing the ammunition, so we've still got a couple more bullets to play with. 34 to be exact. Yeah, and it's been a, a big strategy shift for Tox, who obviously enjoys aim engagements, but instead of just manning up, he's definitely trying to forge clear opportunities where his opponent is weaker, and it's working very well for him so far. Those are some clutch rockets that came out from Tox as well. If he didn't land those, he might have actually still been fighting from behind Statue up until this point. A minute and 15 into OT. Times it with the rocket. He was expecting the play back through the teleporter to be able to get a huge direct off onto Venga. Instead, now we're in this position. One more split on the major items. Venga lurks by the rocket room, just waiting for the push. Ox tries to backstab. It's again, as a regular theme of this event so far, we are sitting in overtime. Reflection of how even the skills have become across the board. And these two are pushing it to the wire. The Tox got the read from his totem that he placed early behind Statue. As soon as Venga went through, he knew exactly where he was, and he's tried to capitalize off of that. He does have a totem up. He hasn't dropped it yet. He's using it more of as a defensive piece, or if he needs that last minute pocket heal, smart way to play it. He's now taking control as they split the rotations up a little bit. But Venga, he's using the Mega as more of a bait. We're seeing if he could reel Tox back in. Here's him jumping around towards Nail Room. Tox is really grinding the pace to a halt now, Dan. 
is, but at the same time, Venga's not trying to initiate anything either. They're both trading major items. And as, as we've spoken about, Tox wants to keep willing away with the HMG. That's what he's been doing so, so effectively. There's no reason for him to change strategy just yet. I've really enjoyed these absolutely random use of peekers out of nowhere. They've all worked as well. Obviously, without an access to a rail, it's quite difficult to actually get rid of them. So, pretty much using them on cooldown is Venga. Yeah, I mean, unless the distance is there and you can get those shots off early enough, by the time it gets to you, you've only just killed it. So you start exactly. taking a little bit of damage. And we're seeing that even with the LG. Tox is precise at the minute with his LG. He's been even better with this HMG, though. The flicks are coming around. The reeds are still on point. This could be the first time there'll be more of a scrap, actually, before we see Venga get Mega. This is going to be the difference, especially if Tox can claim both major items in one rotation. Now he sets himself up for success. Yeah, but as much as Tox is doing a great job with the HMD, Venga's positioning on this mid ground is perfect. He's standing through these choke points. And so if Tox is trying to close the gap, we can see what happens. He's eating rockets, he's eating peekers. And so he's always hesitant and reluctant to push in because he just hasn't got the stack have been being eaten away by all of that additional damage. And this is why it's evening out on tempo so far, because Tox is doing a good job to stop the aggression with the HMD, but Venga is doing a good job to stop the aggression with his hit, with his actual rocket system. We do have an engagement down the low ground. Lightning guns come out. Venga is worth the wear. He might have to rocket jump away. Has he got rockets though? Because he seems to just be standing there. He does. Pox knew exactly what he was up to. He Ooh. counted him on the pushback around. He had the shotgun ready. Then the readjustment comes out. He still lands the shots. They're keeping their stack so close together. Look at the movement on the Pika as well. The prowess from Venga is through the roof. He's playing at such a high pedigree. And the aggression from both of them is matched at every instance. Ammunition low for Tox. He doesn't have much to work with. No real bullets, no real rockets. Oh. He's still trying to land those nails. He's found the corner's turn. The rocket bounce the rockets. on Tox. Both of them trading blow for blow down. We're hitting five minutes and this, this is, is dangerous. Us. Venga's got the high ground. If he pushes in, he could do a significant amount of damage, but he himself plays a bit more careful. Tox is on the low around the Mega. Venga's going to stick around to try and deal some damage. Oh, that was close as well. It's such a close game, Jackie. What I was trying to say when I said class. Didn't even catch that. Close. Oh man, it's been so back and forth between the both of them. And the fact that we're into this position, we've seen these types of overtimes all day today as well. Like ridiculously safe, calculated <laughs> plays, just playing for the major items. Venga's still just doing some drone racing. It's been absolutely disgusting this Ooh. time. It's a big commit for Venga though. The slingshot on that was executed perfectly and he was so precise. Every tick of that LG was boring a hole into Venga. His prediction rockets are absolutely out of this world. He's got Tox relatively low, but he himself isn't the most healthy. There is five seconds before the heavy, and we haven't even seen Venga want to compete for major items. He's doing so well on the defense. Look at these rockets. Every single one just nullifies the pickup that Tox has. And he's done so much damage. This could be his chance here. Tox is in trouble. He's slow. Venga can catch him. The first time Venga's really had the initiative. Let's see what he can do with it. He needs to make it count. Tox drops the totem. The pocket heal comes through. He's got one rocket and 44 rounds for the heavy machine gun. He shouldn't be around here. Tox needs to get out. Plays the ring around the Rosies game absolutely fantastically, though. Gets the slingshot rocket off. Back in with a HMG, but it won't matter. Yep. Venga gives him a taste of his own medicine to finally tackle him. Incredible. I mean, Venga spent the entire map on the back foot and... 10 seconds after he had control, Tox was out of position and Venga wins the map. It was a masterclass of defensive rockets. Tox showed us how you need to play the mid-range game on that map, but Venga showed us how you defend. I mean, it was back and forth the whole way and couldn't have been closer. It was 1,672 damage from Tox's HMG. It was his highest damage output from any weapon. Oh. That was insane. Yeah, I missed those stats. I didn't see. Did you see how much Venga had? Uh, Again, 892. Wow, that's double damage at the mid-range. That's that's incredible. But just look at all of these rockets. Every time Tox wanted to make some sort of move, Venga always had a better position and managed to hit the splash damage, the directs. 
Yeah. What could you say? How do you play against that? I don't know. I mean, it's hard. It, it truly is hard. Like, from a distance, Tox had a great aspect to play in the game. It was so back and forth. Like, the entire regulation was chock a block of twists and turns. Once we got into OT, though, Venga's just control game came out in full swing. He started to find his footing, and Tox couldn't topple him. He got left in a position where he just didn't have health. I mean, what's the best you can do when you've got no rockets, no shotgun, no LG, 44 bullets left in your HMG and one totem? Like, that's it. Yeah, I mean, at the, at the very end there, he shouldn't have shown himself, as you rightly say. He had nothing to work with. He's in a corner. His opponent is fully stacked. Just do it. Or do, do it. Just just hide and try and try and trick him away from you. There's no reason to, to push out there. And unfortunately, he did. And fortunately for Wenger, he was able to make it count in the moment that mattered. Well, at least for the Terminator, he will be back. And we will be back with our second map as we carry on with the series, going into Blood Covenant Dow. Dan, obviously this is the one we were talking about because Tox could have had the opportunity to get a Slash pick later on in the series. Instead, he was the one that banned out Slash, essentially his spirit animal of a champion. I do think he is on the Anarchy for this one as well, though. Yeah, Anarchy for Tox. Nix for Wenger. So Wenger obviously has a lot of utility. He loves that type of double jump champion. He plays it so, so well. And also now obviously has the Ghost Walk to fall back on, whereas Tox has the Anarchy. So obviously Tox coming up against the uh, the Nix of Cooler earlier, if I remember correctly on this map, and, and played that one to perfection in the grand scheme of things. Slightly different champion, but same premise. Speed, all around speed. This time he has the Injection. Oh no, it was the Injection of Cooler. That's my bad, he had the Anarchy. Yeah, that was what he was building up time and time again throughout the entire course of that OT, right? Got up to like 121 yeah. natural stacks, something along the lines of that. So it was it was madness. There were a lot of interesting tidbits that occurred there. Now, this time around, let's see if it will be any different. Wenger, of course, on the Knicks, you've got that Ghost Walk, which can be one of your biggest benefits on a light champion like this. Yep, um, Rail's going to be a big feature. I'm sure Wenger will rely on that significantly as I don't imagine he will want to change course from the previous game. Oh, that was juicy. Heavy connection. Massive gash ripped into Wenger. You can see some stack taken down. That's even worse. Breaking him to pieces. The Ghost Walk, as clutch as it is, though, instantly you get into a dangerous position, just disappear into thin air. <laughs> Good use of it as well. Some players probably would have held on to that. Wenger always going to take the safer option, which saved him his life at the end of it. We have now got a decent stack back. And with the use of those vials, already has the Ghost Walk back up. So something Tox needs to be aware of. We're already starting to see some of the movement benefits of Tox being on the Anarchy. Ooh, the flicks! Oof. If that were connected, I would have been reveling in disgust as this man is causing carnage with his railgun. Shot after shot, he's starting to puncture Wenger and turn him into Wenger sandwiches. Look how quick he wants to play and he's already found Wenger over here by the light arm and Wenger has gone in Viz. He will chase through to try and at least spook Tox, but then decides to back off. And he's some reason Rocket jumped up. Not sure if you misheard Tox positioning or thought he was going to catch him purely off guard. Either way, it didn't work out. Wow, that was straight fire. The flick that just came out from Tox there. If he can keep that up throughout the course of the game, it's just pure madness. High octane, as you like at the minute. The speed, the grace, the elegance, the style as well, as he strikes again. Slamming into Vengo with all of his might, leaving him low on stack. He's only got about 40 stack left there as he darts across the map, barely trying to compose himself and stay alive into this one. Benjing rails. Another major item fight one as well.
Pox is essentially doing to Wenger what went down on Keep when they got into OT. He's just got overall map control and it's excellent. The rotations are on point. There's enough time in between both of the spawns as well that it's so easy for him to get point A to point B. Wenger's just picked up some more railgun. So let's see if maybe that can make a bit of a difference. There's a common theme when watching Wenger. I can't even remember the last time watching him in this event where we've said Wenger's now in control. Um, he just doesn't like to play with the items, it seems. So he enjoys the hard life. He's doing a good job so far of at least keeping Tox somewhat at bay. Not being able to be locked down and still has the ghost walk up, which means Tox's life can be difficult because it's always a one-two punch against the next. Force up the ghost walk and then find her. But you've only got that kind of window of opportunity when the ghost walk's not up to actually kill Nyx. This is a good chance. Vengus undoubtedly going to have to pop the ghost walk probably after he picks up this item, which he does, but exchanges two rails as well. Whoa. Aggression certainly coming through from Toxic. He wants to try and destroy Venga at every given opportunity. It's still nil-nil as well, but it's been the shots that have been coming out that have been the real big point. And the damage that's been done where Venga's barely got by, scraping by the skin of his teeth to escape a firefight. It's all been favoring Toxic. Yeah, Tox could drop onto Venga here and force out the Ghost Walk if he wants to. But again, he himself decides to play slightly safer. He's had PTSD from dropping into Venga's rocket, so definitely doesn't want to do that again. Five minute warning. Five minute stalemate between the both of them. This could be one of the bigger fights. That was a very early ghost war before much damage was actually transitioned across onto Venga. The precision was absolutely disgusting from Tox. Every bit of that LG was ticking through and stripping the armor and flesh off of Venga. Tri bolt usage on point as well as it will land those three bolts. Venga waiting for the spawn, needs that heavy. Tox calls it quits. He does, and now five minutes in, Venga's got his first sense of control on this map as he's forced Toxic back off both items. Almost bullied his way onto it. Has the Ghost Walk up as well, so could pick up this Mega and then go somewhat aggressive. Last time we saw Tox not in control, he was struggling, so let's see what Venga can do. Oh, that's Ooh. a nice rocket. That was really powerful. That instantly just means that Venga throws the towel in, starts sprinting his way back, has to make his move over towards Mega. This might be one of the first times Venga's actually been allowed to take a Mega without either using the Ghost Walk or trying to waste as much time as possible. Fox, yeah, on, mate. He misses the jump. There we go. Better safe than sorry. A little bit of nail never hurt anybody. I think that's strictly true. I mean, it depends, you know, put a nail through your finger, probably, or have a nail put through you, also probably bad, but if it's in a jump, probably quite beneficial. Right now, it's certainly been a blessing for Tox. It's kept him up on this high ground, looking to try and take the lead and put himself in that first position. He hasn't had an opportunity yet, though, Dan. Wenger has not really revealed himself or stayed exposed for too long, but they butt heads, both of them, like deer, clashing against each other in a power struggle. And uh, Tox definitely lost that encounter as he then retreats himself. A little bit of a precarious position as Venga drops down, trying to go aggressive. Tox dodging, weaving through the pillars, hits the rail as well. But Venga does pick up the item and hits a rail. Tox is now low. Venga must know how low he is. Can he finish him off? He wants to. Got the ghost walk. Somehow Tox survives. But back to still square one. Obviously, the big thing that's looming above the both of them is the fact that Leap Tox is one map up. Of uh, Venga, rather, that he's one map up. So he's in a good spot here to waste as much time as possible. He doesn't necessarily need to overreact or force any issues. He's probably quite happy for this game to carry on, rinse and repeat as it is right now, Dem, where he's just trying to cycle the items. Take it into an overtime scenario and then just fight for that one frag. Tox, however, he might need to turn up the tempo a little bit. 
Yeah, they're both very conservative in their approach. There was a couple of times already where I do feel that Venga could have gone aggressive with the Ghost Walk and tried to catch Tox, but at the moment, conserving it and using it purely as a defensive tool, which is absolutely admirable, because at the end of the day, it is your tournament life on the line, and so you want to play in a style where you are comfortable. And obviously both being light champions, meaning every single one of these rails will hurt a lot and set them back. So that's why it's seeing the jousting going on between the both of them. Tox misses three rails in a row. Oh gee, really starting to zap its way through Tox now. It's done an awful lot of damage and Tox he has to pop the heal. Dodges the rocket as well with the slight adjustment, doing the charge charge slides at the side. All of his tribal burst detonating in the air above him, but they won't force him off the bigger picture. The fact he wanted that heavy. We are 50 seconds away from a no frag OT coming through. Yeah, and as much as we've talked about how difficult it has been for Tox to lock down Venga, the same is also very, very true for Venga, right? Because Tox has that speed, and so Venga needs to be absolutely sure that he can catch up to Tox if making any move or popping a ghost walk, as he just did. So it's, it's difficult for both to truly engage to the death. as well when you get into a position like this it all comes down to the fact you don't want to go into a fight if you're not fully stacked because you exactly. realize you have no second chances that do or die and for Tox that could be one of the things that might knock his confidence slightly he's running the risk because he peers out tries to land those rails Venga getting overly aggressive this could actually be his downfall Tox should be able to beat him on the race towards heavy he's stuck up there five seconds till ghost walk is available Dan if Tox commits this this could be the kill and the game and Venga scurries out of there doesn't do much damage himself so we'll be wary around this mega does go up anyway hits the rail it's open can he hit another Tox instead hits one Venga needs to be very careful it has to pop the ghost walks to get out not going to be able to stick around for that mega Fox knows he's got Venger on the ropes, he's done a lot of damage, and there's no Ghost Walk, so definitely expect the tempo to be high here from Tox. All he needs is one more frag. Looking of one, he only has one rail left as well, so he's not going to overcommit. The wait, get the heavy spawn, then make his move out. Heavy, taking a lot of damage as well from the peak from Venger. He still had some rails to slay with and did do a nice amount of damage. The tri has been a huge benefit for Tox. Here comes the HMG. It was an incredible weapon from no. out of Corrupted Keep. Tox using the rockets Ooh. and Venger scarpering using the Ghost Walk. And he's found it down below. He's done lots of damage, but he's bounced up the stairway. Tox manages to get away just for now. He's got the heavy, but he's got not a lot of health. Benga trapped him down below. I felt that coming and was so close. Somehow Tox still survives. No injection up, so a rail will set him back hugely. The Tox feeling has no rails. He's trying to shoot. He's got no rails. It's Tox click. The curse comes back to haunt him once more. There's his injection. 114 natural stack. <sighs> Benga, it's gone aggressive. Tox. Oh, he's swinging. He's diving for the committal. He wants to kill him, and Tox really doesn't have any weaponry to fight back with. He's panicking, Dan. <laughs> he's getting out the tribolt. He's getting out the rockets. He's getting out the rail, but they're all empty. It's like a rundown fairground. There just isn't a lot to go on. No, he needs to, as you say, recompose, get back to the rail, get back to the tribolt. That was a really close state of affairs, and he has got the key weapon now. Venga's Ghost Walk is now going to be back up. He's very comfortable and the pressure definitely feels like it's on Tox now as that momentum has swung firmly in the favor of Venga. He's got good item control over on that mega area. He's keeping the pressure on Tox, but we see how important hitting those rails are. And now there's a long time before the next major item. Tox, again. This is a bit of a paradigm shift. He's the one back at the lead. Now he actually has ammunition as well. And all of the tribal bursts are detonating. Launches himself. Using oh the rocket to God. send himself flying. 
Fenga purely saved by the Ghost Walk, and he's left with no HP. The Trigolt could have been the weapon that opens this up and also shuts no the game way. down. Fenga is barely escaping without a sliver of life every time. How does he do this? Always manages to find a way to escape, but Tox knows where he is. Can he hit the rail? He can't as Venga has got enough stack to feel confident to fight. Once again, Tox does all the hard work. He just can't finish him off. The amount of damage from that tribolt was ridiculous. Oh. Nice rail. That was a really beautiful rail. And you can see the speed is there as well. He's turned up the tempo and he is trying to swing into action using the speed against Venga. Needs to make a conscious effort to keep his eye on the prize though and eye on the ammunition as well. There's been a couple of instances of clicks coming through already. He's only got four rails left. Dead looks to initiate and open up with the rocket. Timing's perfect as he drops down. That is an immediate ghost walk from Venga. They both battle in close proximity over control of the heavy. Dan Tox wow. on 10 HP has to run. That was so smart from Venga to go aggressive there, having used that Ghost Walk, hit the direct rocket, pops the Ghost Walk immediately, follows Tox through. Duper unfortunate not to get the frag. Oh damn, this game has been back and forth like a pendulum over and over in every instance there's been so many twists and turns of the damage that's been dealt tox has hit some fantastic tri bolt shots but now it goes back into a position where it looks like the eyes are on venga tox is close to mega though and as it spawns in he'll be able to take any of the damage that venga does to him and clean it straight off yeah, and even though the circumstances doesn't change, it's amazing how every minute just increases the pressure these players are feeling. I know for I'm even feeling more and more pressure. Just It's crazy how these two are remaining so composed and disciplined in their approach. One tribal shot left. That's the last. Ammunition gone for Tops. Venga hitting rails as well, stripping Tox of his defense, but the response is amazing. He's out of rails. He keeps living himself so susceptible. He gets into a position where he tries to commit to a fight. Another Tox click. He finally realizes that he doesn't have any bullets left to try and punish. Switches to the LG as his last ditch attempt to do some damage. Venga slides back into the night to hide in the shadows. Tox dropping down. He'll get a heavy, but that's all he's going to get. He's on the HMG, riddling off shots, but I don't think it's going to matter, Dan. It'll be the race back over towards the oh. Lager. They're both so low, essentially in the same position of stack. But as Lager, you say, he's got Tox, the high ground. And Tox hasn't got a rail. He's useless. There's nothing he can do. He's not he had anything the whole game, mate. He just doesn't pick up guns. <laughs> he needs ammo. I mean, that could come back to haunt him as he still can't, hasn't got one. He can't get across. Venga's going to have to pop the Ghost Walk. He can't stick around and just eat up that damage. But Tox himself is very low, so can't really commit to the Mega either. Hasn't got a... <laughs> he needs to go and get a rail. He has to. Right. Honestly, the position we're now in is the definition of squeaky bum time. That is what we are witnessing with our eyeballs, Dan. And the rails coming out from Venga could make this even more of a clencher as he does a lot of damage. Tox, low on HP. If he loses this in OT, he is out as well. He's already a map down and he's starting to lose health more and more by the second. 40 stack is all he has left, keeping him alive into the game. This is terrifying. He's so, he's living on the edge right here. Once again, he's so low. Venga's gone aggressive. I think he saw that though. He has to run away. He's paranoid. And Venga has gone back the other way as my heart rate still is racing. My gray hairs are still coming through. Tox is living very dangerously. Seven minutes into overtime. Venga firmly in control as he rocket jumps up. He's got the high ground. He knows where Tox is. Roughly. He's seen a leg, he's seen a bit of skin, he wants to give him some how's your father. He saw the ghost walk, the wisp of air as Venga drops onto him but doesn't do enough to make him railable. 
It's the aggressive Ghost Wolf though. It's one of the first few we've actually seen. That probably means that Venga's trying to play with that killer instinct. He wanted to get aggressive and look how big his stack is as well. It's looking ginormous and you can only imagine his confidence is starting to rise to match it. Well, this is what happened on the last map. Tox had control for the entire period of time and as soon as Venga got back hit control, he was able to go on the initiative and trap Tox. So, Tox is obviously praying that same situation doesn't happen again and he needs to now work his magic on the defense. He picked his stack very high, saw Cooler doing that earlier as well. Doesn't want to be left vulnerable to any offensive ghost walks or any potential traps. Keep that inject on cooldown. Three natural stack. I... It's been a long game, Jackie. It really has been. It's been reflected literally just by Tox's HP alone. The fact he's being able to build himself up to this position is scary. It's worrying for the overall outcome, especially when you pitch the fact that he's up against the light champion like Nyx as well. It only gets worse for wear the longer and longer this game goes on. It's effectively what we saw when Cooler was playing like this. Here comes the fight though, but no Tox. He doesn't want to get his hands dirty. He starts running, but Venga has had enough. He wants to finish it now as he pushes in with the LG. He starts stripping him of all of his oh HP. God. They're both doing... Ooh and hitting their clutch shots, which means neither one can commit to a final frag, as Venga did indeed trap Tox, but that last clutch rail forced Venga away. That rail is big. Venga's still gonna push, he's healthy, but he's got no ghost walks. He doesn't want to over commit. Tox is running slightly low on rail. Four left, don't wanna see a repeat of what we've seen twice already this map. We're about to have two games in the space of one here. We're coming up towards the 10 minute mark, but they might end it just before. Tox, so much damage there. Beautifully impactful, and he traces him well. He knows exactly where Venger is. He just needs to catch him off guard. He comes out of the ghost walk. He won't have it for the next 40 seconds, and that Mega's already gone. If Tox can pick up the heavy here, he's now in a position where he could finally try and shut down the game. He has all of the chips on his side of the table, but maybe get some more railgun ammo. We're about to enter our second overtime off the map, if that's even a thing. This tribal has been bastardly good as well. So many shots have landed and damn, this might be it. The ghost walks forced out. He just needs to locate him off the back. Again, it's another double cycle of the rotation. That's both major items going to Tox. But you only has four railgun though. You're completely right. This is the big opportunity. Anytime you force a defensive ghost walk and they get nothing in return, this is when you know you need to take the initiative. This is why we see Tox kind of prowling around the map like a lion, trying to find his prey and he has found him down below. But can he drop? That lightning gun was critical from Venga. If he didn't hit that much damage, Tox probably could have dropped, but now the ghost walks back up, which means that pressure needs to restart. Holding the angle as well. He's just waiting here. I thought he was actually going to try and get the rail off and then retreat instead. He doesn't want to run any risks. He backs off, but Tox is clearing all possibilities. Using those rockets to bypass any locations at all that Venga could just appear from as they both wait, hungering for the spawn of the Mega. Venga plays it smart, knew he was coming. Shot off the warning rocket, but the rail hits harder. Tox doing damage. This is a good start, and he's beginning to chase. He knows exactly where he is. The rocket actually lands. He gets the tag off. It was it's late, but it's big. It was a clip. It wasn't a lot. It was a clip. Not enough to allow Tox to go in just yet. He needs to force up the Ghost Walk, which is what he's trying to do, and he will be able to do it. Venga traps him, but Venga is very, very low. Tox knows how low he is, but also Tox needs to pick up items because he himself is vulnerable to a rocket or two. Can close find his down. opponent. Every second that passes means Venger is also restacking. Even though Tox cannot let these items go, he might need to start taking one or two more risks because at the end of the day, he needs to trap the Nyx. If he just let the Nyx survive, she'll get her Ghost Wall back up and you have to start again. So definitely the impetus is on Tox to take these risks, not on Venger. Yeah, I mean, he's just got to commit after he forces out that Ghost Walk. That's his best case scenario. Or else Venga's just going to farm up all the vials. The Tribolt has been a friend 
for Tox throughout the course of this map. He's still doing damage with it, but he is stripped of ammunition. There's one close by if he wants to try and restruck, but it won't matter. Wenger finally uses the Ghost Walk. This is the opportunity for Wenger to strike. He needs to attack right here, right now. He has been right up Struggle Street for a while, but this could be the moment of truth. Through the teleporter, he drops the rocket. So tricky. He is so tricky, but you're completely right. Tox needs to make this count. He's got 10 seconds to catch his opponent before that Ghost Walk comes back up. At the end of the day, Wenger's not allowing these rail duels to happen. He's taking one pot shot and running. So Tox isn't going to be able to string back-to-back -back damage. He has to force that Ghost Walk and continue the pressure. But in respect to Wenger, he's doing enough damage to force this awareness that Tox cannot overcommit. Oh, Ouch. Rail. He's knocked him down. Oh, so he's got the rail the again. Up, the click comes through again, Tox. Uh. The weapon's being clicked. Oh, man. Come on. <laughs> he needs a bigger oh. magazine. It's ridiculous. At this point, though, we're 13 minutes, 30 seconds into the game. The return of the HMG comes out. The rockets are starting to be slammed into the ground. And Tox, it seems like he's decided to try and commit. He went for the wide swing. There's a nice amount of damage onto Tox. He's forced into taking a light. Wenger will get the heavy. There's still five seconds till Mega spawns, but Wenger is coming thick and fast. Lurks around the corner, appears with a ghost walk. A lot of damage done. The biggest advantage he's had for quite some time now. It would need to be some hurty verties if he wants to kill. And Tox still thinks he has ammo. He doesn't have ammo. Tox got no rockets. No. <laughs> Tox has just got to run until he picks up weapons because he can't do anything. He's done a good job to survive, but his next big job is basically a respawn. Pick up weapons. Just, yeah, come in as a fresh spawn. Reset <laughs> yourself. Come on. Okay, he's got the oh. rail gun back. He's got five bullets in the tri bolt as well. This game is going to give me an absolute heart attack, but we need to see it be an art attack from Tox. Paint me a pretty picture, do some damage as he peeks out. I need him to hit a few shots here as it's been so ridiculous the way he's been playing it. Both of them exchanging oh. blow for blow though. What? But there's the peak. Wait, hits what? the rail. The response hits rail from Venga. Tox had 87 health and, and Venga hits the fade away. That is madness. Oh, my. God, a 26-minute game, Jackie. Dude, what? That's nearly half an hour. That was like an Emma Dale omnibus, and it's finished by just the, <laughs> the most disgusting rail from Wenger in the blink uh, of an eye. Oh, Dan. I can't take it. <laughs> it's giving me a headache. That's ridiculous. Uh, the amount of clicks. The amount of clicks. The amount of times you just didn't have ammo. I wasn't, my, I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I didn't expect it to end right then and there after such a long game. <laughs> Done. Just like that. It's over. I, don't know. I, I, I need Flea. I need Flea and Ryan to break that down. I can't comprehend what we just talked about. My oh, God. Dear, dear, dear Lord. That was an, a classic, an epic, and a well-deserved victory. Two, two long overtimes. Couldn't have been any closer. I am absolutely blown away. I am stumped by the way that was played. Um, a ridiculous series. Honestly, probably the most wild overtime I've ever had the pleasure of casting with you, Dan. And uh, I'm glad we were here for it. Welcome back, of course, to Fleet and Ryan. I'm sure you've got a bit more energy than us after that one, getting to witness it. We're I'm stumped. What, what was your perspective? I mean, that's that's easy for you to say. I've just, um, I, I completely, I was so engrossed in that that I missed that we're a little bit ahead of everyone else. So I was watching it from the stream. I'm, oh, God, I've got to come back. Um, yeah, that was one of the absolute longest overtimes that we've ever seen without question. And <sighs> it just, it. I said this many, many times, and I'll say it again because it's especially prominent now. It is so stressful being a Tox fan, isn't it? Because <laughs> you get maps like that where he's run out of ammo for like three weapons and... Or a Venga fan. Yeah, I mean, the that's clicks. even split right there. The clicks. I saw people in chat talk about let's rename Tox to Click because so often he just ran out of ammo. And then it wasn't just like, okay, I'm going to land the rail. No, no, he's out of rail. 
He's out of tribal. He's out of rockets. He's barely got any LG left. He just has to take a complete break and run away. But my god, what a game that was. That is one of those legendary matches that's going to go down in history, similar to that infamous grand final between, I think it was Rafa and Evil at QuakeCon. Also, tremendously long overtime. This is Quake history in the making, and what a beautifully exhilarating game that was. It, it, honestly, I do agree. It was the fact that it was literally Tribot comes out, click. Railgun comes out, click. Rocket comes out, click. And I was just sat there like, what's he doing, man? Please, <laughs> not like this. Uh, that's, I mean, I think that game just epitomizes how glorious Quake is as a, as a, as a game because you have epic games of like yeah. it's 20 20 at all score and then you have a nil nil after 25 minutes it was probably the most entertaining thing i've ever seen how back and forth how much strategy there was how much skill that came out so my heart is is still going uh, I'm, I'm gonna be honest i i am heartbroken for tox i i was trying so hard to be unbiased as you do as a commentator right but watching that map and watching just how hard he was having to work uh just those those final moments it was it's very much a feels bad man moment, but if you're a Wenger fan, that's a, a massive sigh of relief. And if you are Wenger, God, I can't even imagine yeah. how he's feeling right now.